Hey class, it's Mrs. Harris. I thought it'd be good to, as part of your biological school, is go over the microscope um, because we are doing a unit called Inside the Cell and so you need to know how to use your microscope. And for some of you, you may have forgotten some of this or it's just a good skill refresher. So let's have a look at the care of the microscope, the parts and how to focus. Okay, we will be using a light microscope, um, the model's found in most schools. It has uh, what's called compound lenses because there's a lens here in the eyepiece and there's a lens here as well. So that, that's why it's compound um, and used to magnify um, objects. The lenses blend, bend or refract the light to make the object beneath them appear closer. So common magnification are times um, 40 times 100 or times 400. So the smallest one is, this is 10, this is times 4, and then the next biggest one generally is times 10, so that times 10 times 4 makes it times 40, times 10 times uh, 10 makes it 100 magnification, so 100 times larger, and this is times 10 and this is times 40, the largest um, uh, lens on this dial here. Uh, so times 10 times 40 makes it 400 magnification. So if you're doing biological drawings, it's really important that you write the magnification because as you imagine, uh, the, what depending on the magnification is will drastically alter what you see. So always, um, guidelines for you always create with two hands, uh, one in the arm, one under base is what I recommend. Uh, use any lens paper for cleaning, and if there's any cleaning, do not force the knobs or, you know, if it's a bit stuck, don't keep forcing it, and always store in a covered place. Thanks, son. That was Mr. Harris bringing me a cup of tea. Isn't he a gem? Because it's only, what, 5.30 in the morning. Crazy Mrs. Harris. So let's have a look at the different parts. So this is the eyepiece which you look down. This is the arm, which is what I recommend you use to carry it. Ah, there goes my son, Lockie. <laughs> Morning. I'm just making a video for school, honey. Do you need to get something? No, no. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, this is called the stage uh, where you put the specimen that you're going to be looking at. This is the coarse focus, so that makes big adjustments. That's why it's called coarse. This is the fine focus, which makes fine adjustments to what you view. This is the base, so when you carry it, you put a hand here on the arm and one underneath the base. This is the light that's being uh, projected up through the specimen. This is called the diaphragm. Make sure that that's open because that changes the amount of light that lets through. So it's, um, sometimes people say to me, oh, I can't see anything, miss, and then you just adjust, adjust the diaphragm and you have a great view. This is called the stage clips, which anchor the microscope slide so it doesn't move. Because if you found something good, the last thing you want to do is it gets slipped. These are the, called the objective lenses. And this is the uh, revolving nose piece, it's called. And this is the body tube of the eye, eye of the microscope. Your microscope has three magnifications, scanning, low and high. Each objective will have the written magnification. In addition to this, the ocular lens or eyepiece has a magnification. So as I said before, this is the ocular lens in the eyepiece and this is the three different types of magnification and you multiply them together to get the total magnification, which I just went over. So general procedures for using the microscope make, microscope, make sure all backpacks and materials are out of the aisles and off the top desk. That's why we have them in a backpack rack. Uh, plug in your microscope to the outlet and store with the cord wrapped around the microscope base and carry the base with the arm in both hands. Always start scanning the object. Odds are you'll be able to see something at this setting. Uh, use the coarse knob to focus and then the fine adjustment knob until you get a clear image. Um, it may be a small image because it's a low magnification, but you won't be able to find it on the high powers without doing this first step. So always start scanning it before you start zooming in and increasing the magnification because you won't be able to find. Once you've found something to focus on when you're scanning, switch to low power and use the coarse adjustment knob to refocus and then you use the fine adjustment knob to make uh, the image crystal clear. Uh, I just want to say that sometimes um, what you see and then someone else sees can be different, um, particularly I wear glasses so I will have it on a different setting to someone who has perfect vision for example. So when you're moving and working together always make sure you do a little bit of a fine adjustment to get a better view because your eyesight is not identical to the person that you're working with. Um, now switch, once you've found what you want to focus in on and zoom in on, you switch to high power um, and it's really important to make sure that you check that there's enough room for the um, objective lens to slide around without cracking the slide, uh, that there's enough physical space. 
uh, recap scan using coarse and fine knob then move to low power using a coarse and fine knob and high power you only use fine knob adjustments because if you use the coarse knob adjustments that's when people crank it up and smash into the slide and fracture it. Using high power your slide must be focused on low power before attempting to use a step and click the nose piece to the longest objective. Do not use the coarse focusing knob as this will crack the slide or the lens and use the fine focus knob to bring the slide into perfect view. When you have to draw a specimen um, you need to use a pencil so this is uh, a biological school is actually drawing specimens and I know I've tried to get you guys to have a go at doing this. You use a pencil and make sure that you can erase and new shade areas. All drawings should be clear with proper labelling and be large enough to view the details. Drawings should be labelled with a specimen name and for, ex and made for example here amoeba it's times 100 or times 400. Labels should be written on the outside of the circle so you draw a circle to indicate what your view is and then you draw the specimen inside that circle. The circle indicates a viewing field as seen through the eyepiece and specimens should be drawn to scale. If your specimen takes up the whole viewing field then make sure that your drawing reflects this. To clean up, store your microscope with the scanning objective in place, wrap cords and cover microscopes, double check to make sure you haven't left a slide on the mounting stage of the microscope and place microscopes back in their designated location. Okay, troubleshooting. Occasionally you may have trouble working with your microscope. Here are some common problems and solutions. The image is too dark. Adjust that diaphragm to make sure your light is on. If there's a spot in my viewing field, even when I move the slide, the spot stays in the same place. That means your lens is dirty, so you need to use lens paper and only lens paper to carefully clean the lenses. The spot is probably just a speck of dust. I can't see anything under high power. Remember the steps. If you can't focus under scanning and then low power, you won't be able to focus anything under high power. So start back at the basics at your times 40 magnification. Start with scanning and walk through the steps again. So question four, the problem four, only half of my viewing field is lit. It looks like there's a half moon in there. You probably don't have your full objective lens fully clicked into place. So here I want you to practice. Um, labeling so your evidence of watching this video is you'll have a list from 1 to 14 of the parts of the microscope and we will carry out this quiz in class um, quiz over the microscope when focusing thank you class I look forward to seeing you in lab bye